another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Fun Island Amusement Park, late one summer night. The smell of popcorn and Frank. The music of the carousel. The thunder of the roller coaster. The steady sound of shots from the shooting gallery. The ceaseless calls of archers along the midway. All the garish life and color of a carnival. And hiding behind them, the shadows that haunt the lives of the carny people. From the hunchback who peddles balloons to Danny King, the diving wonder of the world. Over this way, boss. Danny King is down at the end of the midway. Now, uh, this is Fun Island, huh? Somehow I've never been out here before. Yeah, you go more for nightclubs and racetracks, boss. But a lot of people like this kind of fun. I wonder if we shouldn't look into it. A lot of potential customers out here. Ah, uh, they're all two-bit spenders, every one of them. Oh, there's Danny King's pit. Hey, you see that diving tower? That's him now, climbing up on it. This is where Danny's been hiding out. No wonder we couldn't find him. Yeah. You know, if I hadn't seen his mug and had newspapers... Hey, we better hurry, boss. He's already up on a platform. You mean he's really going to dive from up there? He must be 60 feet up. 75. And he dives into a canvas pool six feet deep. You know, he's a bum, this guy. He's a no good, but in college he was a diving champ. Yeah, we better stop here. Crowd's getting too thick. I don't like crowds. Okay, boss. All right, folks, all right. Now we bring you our feature attraction, Danny King, the human seal, the diving wonder of the world. It's free, folks, it's free. Step up, step up, step up. In just a moment, this daring young man you see standing far above your head is going to dive through flaming gasoline into five feet of water. Yes, folks, five feet of water. Can he perform this feat of daring and live 75 feet into a tiny canvas tank? He's getting ready, folks. He's getting ready. Watch him make his desperate gamble with death. He's getting set. He's really going to do it. And here he comes, folks. He's in the air. And he's plunging through the flames. He's hurtling for us. Is he going to miss the tank? And he's done it. 75 feet into a puddle of water and he still lives. Danny King, the diving wonder of the world. Give him a hand, folks. Give him a hand. That's it. Very neatly done. Charlie, if Danny has to earn his living like this, I doubt if he has $10,000 to pay us. That's right. But he's got a rich uncle. A real rich uncle. Quite true. All right. Suppose we give him time to get dressed. And we'll have our little chat with Danny. Hey, Danny, are you dressed? Yeah, what is it? There's two guys outside want to see you. I don't like their looks. They got the look of the racket to me. Stall them off, Parker. I don't want to see them. That's too bad, Danny. Huh? Because we're here. Oh, Grogan. Hey, you can't come busting in here like this. Outside, little take man. Your hands off me. No, 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 it's, it's okay, Barker. I, I know these fellows. You heard the man. Well, if you say so, Danny. I'll uh, wait outside. Well, Danny, this is a pleasant surprise. What do you want? Just to say hello and collect ten thousand dollars. I don't owe you anything. You got 25000 from me, and I stole part of that. My uncle threw me out. That ought to satisfy you. Unfortunately, no. I still hold $10,000 of your IOU. Well, I haven't got it. Tell him, Mike. He knows somebody who does have it. Charlie means your uncle, Danny. Harvey K. Randolph. Mm, you'll never give me a cent. I forged his check for the last 5000 you suckered out of me, and my uncle threw me out. Oh, that's too bad, ain't it, Mike? Listen... Someday I'll get at least a million. He's got it now, but it's held in trust for me. When I get it, I'll pay you double. Triple! All right, Danny. If you need time, we'll give you time. I, I, I knew you'd be reasonable. I pride myself on being reasonable. So I'm giving you a whole week in which to pay me that $10,000 or else, Danny. Or else. It's not 
good, huh, Danny? They'll kill me, Bart. Yeah, my Brogan plays for keeps, but... Look, if your uncle... He has absolutely no use for me. I've told you how I forged that check, and then he... Yeah, and he tossed you out on your ear. Sink or swim, huh? Yeah. But look, with your life in danger... My you... life. <laughs> that wouldn't matter to Uncle Harvey. He told me to never come to him again, and he meant it. Boy, you really got yourself sold in a sack. There isn't a soul who... Wait. Betty. Who's Betty? Betty Thompson. A, a sort of a combination nurse and secretary for Uncle Harvey. She's a nice kid if you like him playing with glasses. Well, what can she do? Oh, Uncle Harvey dotes on her, and she dotes on me. She's in love with me. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'll, I'll phone her. I'll make a date. She's around here? Yeah, I'm sure of it. Every summer, Uncle Harvey takes a suite at the Grand Beach Hotel. That's only a couple of miles up the beach from here, and... Yeah. She might be followed. I'm not able to get away. The Grand Beach, sure. huh? That's a real ritzy joint. You almost got to have a passport to get inside. I got it. The hotel's outdoor swimming pool. What about it? Well, it's open to the public on Tuesdays. Tomorrow's Tuesday. And Betty could slip down for a swim, and Uncle Harvey wouldn't think anything of it. Here. I'll phone her now and tell her to join me in the pool tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> Pretend not to notice me. Just, just swim alongside me. Oh, I thought you were never coming. Well, I was delayed. Now listen. Okay. Climb out of the pool. Uh huh. And lie on the tiles. All right. Just casually. Uh huh. I'll come and lie down a couple of feet away. All right. I'll cover my face with a towel. You can talk and not be noticed. Yes, Daddy. Anything you say. Go on, climb out now. All right. And don't look back at me. We can talk now, Betty. But don't look at me. Oh, Daddy, can't I even look at you after all this time? No, I don't want anyone even to suspect we've been in contact. Well, glad I'm here? Oh, you know I am. I've thought about you so much. You said you were going to write. Uncle Harvey wouldn't have liked it. But I love you. You're more important to me than he is. Oh, Danny, darling, where have you been? Yeah, a lot of places. Right now, I'm making a pretty good living. 200 a week. Oh, Danny, that's wonderful. Your uncle... Oh. What about him? If he knew, he might forgive you. At least, well, he might. You know him better than that. Well, he's terribly stern, I know. But if he thought you turned over a new leaf... Well, I have. But I'm in trouble. Danny, no. Yeah, I need $10,000. And if I don't get it, I'll be killed. Don't say that. Please tell me that isn't true. It is true. You've got to help me. I don't want to, but how? Well, I don't know how. Daddy! Somehow. Hmm? Don't talk. Pretend to be asleep. What is it? Your uncle. He's waving to me from his bedroom window. Quiet, quiet. There. He's gone now. From his bedroom window? Yes, the apartment overlooks the pool. It's on the fifth floor, directly above us. See? Up there. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah. Right above us. He often watches me when I come swimming. He see me. No, no, no. The towel hit your face. Oh, so that's where the old boy hangs out. Mm -hmm. The sea air is good for him. He gets terrible headaches sometimes. Yeah, I should weep. Now, listen. I have to have 10,000 inside six days. Six days? Daddy, how can we get it? From Uncle Harvey. You have to give him some sob story. My life depends on it. Elizabeth, you are not experienced in the art of life. But, Mr. Randolph... This whole story about needing $10,000 to save your brother in San Francisco from jail, it's a complete fabrication now, isn't it? Oh, no, no, sir. Jack is desperate, and I'll pay it back out of my salary. Oh, please, my dear, your story's a lie. The only person you would lie for is Daniel. Am I right? Yes, Mr. Randolph. 
Danny needs the money. He needs it terribly. What difficulty is he in now? Some gamblers. They threatened to kill him. I see. But he's reformed. Really, he has. If you can only help him out of this trouble... Then Elizabeth, I... you may think me hard-hearted, but I've helped Daniel out of an endless succession of difficulties in the last few years. Each time he swore to reform. Oh, I know, but this time he has. I'm sure of it. Ah, you love it. You must help him. Please say that you will. There is only one help for Daniel, to solve his own problems and stand on his own feet. Now, these men are simply trying to scare him. Now, it hurts me to say this to you, but... For Daniel's own sake, the answer is no. Who is it? Just me. No. Hey, it's starting to rain. Radio says we'll have three days of rain, maybe more. Yeah, it's just dandy. Hey, Danny. This ain't doing any good, lapping up the bulls that way. You know, your timing is way off. Tonight you almost missed the pool. Pretty near give me heart failure. Now, don't worry about me. I can dive blindfolded on a pitch dark night. Drunk or sober. Oh, he's up, Danny. Listen, I uh, passed that uh, Betty kid in the hall, bawling her eyes out. What'd you say to her? I told her to stop bothering me. I needed ten thousand dollars, and she brings me five hundred. Well, she loves you, Danny. She's doing her best. That uncle of yours just won't sell a shell out of dime. That's... No, no, I gotta sink or swim on my own. He says. I could only get my hands around his throat and choke and choke and choke him. All right, Danny, now take it easy. Yeah, with three days left, he tells me to take it easy. A million dollars I have coming to me when Uncle Harvey dies, or I reach 28. Only I'll never get it because I won't reach 28. You keep on living and I'll be dead. If he'd only die now. If he'd only die like a man his age should. What is it, Danny? What's my... Hmm... It is an idea. <laughs> a really terrific idea. I don't intend to get killed, see? No matter what I have to do, I don't intend to get killed. You get me? No, no, I'm not sure I do. No, it doesn't matter. Just find me the name of a tailor who can make a bellhop uniform in a hurry and keep his mouth shut. I like it, Barker. How's it look, huh? Well, you look just like a bellhop. <laughs> hey, what's this say on the pocket? Grand Beach Hotel. Hey, Danny, what is this? Simple. No, I'm a bellhop at the Grand Beach. No kidding, you really? Oh, of course not. But I'm paying a call there tonight, and if anybody notices me, I'm just a bellhop. Nobody to look at twice. You gonna go see your uncle? Look, forget everything. Just don't ever spill a word of this. Oh, not me. I know how to keep my mouth shut. Hey, listen. Is that thunder? Yeah. The weather's getting worse. Rain for two more days anyway, the radio says. Huh. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Now, listen, I, uh, I have a date with Betty tonight. I called her up and told her I made a settlement with Brogan. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm to meet her at the Quartet Cafe at 1 a.m. She thinks I'm going to ask her to marry me. Well, I'll be a little late. You'll meet her and keep her there till I get there. Okay, if you say so. I'll be there at 10 after. Just keep her there. Yes, who is it? A message from Miss Thompson. From Elizabeth? <clears throat> Just a moment. <clears throat> Let me see you. Oh, yes, one of the bellboys. Well, I like to be certain. <clears throat> All right, come on in. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> now, you say you have a message. Let me have it. Daniel. Yes, Uncle Harvey. What the devil are you doing in that bellboy outfit? 
I had to see you. I had to talk to you. Elizabeth already has pleaded your case, and the answer's no. Uncle Harvey, I need $10,000. They'll kill me if I don't pay it. You understand? They'll kill me. Leave me lying in the gutter. <laughs> Yeah, you'll like that, won't you? You always said I belong in the gutter. Please, Daniel, no melodramatics. Possibly someone is trying to scare you. And part of your growing up is to learn not to be so easily scared. I am scared of dying. For the last time, Uncle Hardy, will you let me have $10,000 of my own money to save my life? I'm sorry. I cannot go back on the principles that I live by. Then you have to die by them, too. Why, you... A gun. And loaded and silenced. Don't be a fool. Now, surely you know you can't kill me if that's what you plan. I have a million dollars coming to me, and I can only collect it now if you die. Well, I need it. So you're going to die, Uncle Harvey. Daniel, you are being absurd as well as melodramatic. You always had a low opinion of me. If you'd had more faith in me, maybe I'd have amounted to something. But did you ever think I'd get down to murder, huh? Daniel, you're out of your mind. If you harm me, all the motive will point to you. You'll be electrocuted. Oh, no. Because you're going to commit suicide. You're going to hang yourself with your dressing gown cord. No one will believe that. Oh, yes, you've had a lot of bad headaches. That's reason enough. And besides, they'll have to believe it. Even Betty. You see, the door will be locked from the inside, and the chain will be in place, and the door will be bolted, proving you had to be alone so no one could possibly have killed you but yourself. How? How do you propose to manage that? When you know, Uncle, you'll be dead. Hey, Uncle Harvey. How quietly you hang. Perfect model of a gentleman's suicide. The door. Hmm. Locked and bolted on the inside. Chair under your feet. Kicked over to keep up appearances. Oh, yes, your, your bedside clock. I must set it to head half an hour and break it on the floor. There. Now, uh, uh, shift the, uh, the chair. And then knock against the dresser and the clock fell. You died at half past one. When I'll be drinking with Betty. Asking her to marry me. The perfect alibi. It will keep her from being suspicious. Now for the graceful exit. First open the window. Oh, it's still raining. Good. No one would be around on a night like this. Now, out on the window ledge. Yeah, that's it. Close the window tight behind me. Now for the big dive. A million dollar dive. <laughs> pool directly below me. I, I, I could see it then, about, about 15 feet out, eight feet deep. <laughs> Child's play for Danny King, the diving wonder. Just a little push outward to clear the tiles, nothing to it. <laughs> and Uncle Harvey is left behind, dead in a locked room. <laughs> and I'll go after the next flash of lightning. A shield on ice is about to be thrown off balance. Goodbye, Uncle Harvey. A million dollars. Here comes Danny. Hey, Betty. You wear out that coffee cup. Oh, oh, I'm still stirring it. I guess I'm worried about Danny. He's so late. He's fine. He said he'd be a little late. Oh, I'm so glad he... He's got that business with those awful gamblers straightened out. I do love him, so I, I know he's going to be different after this. Sure he is. It's going to be all right. His uncle just misjudged him, that's all. Then he's a fine person, really. But it's after half past one and he isn't here yet. Oh, I'm being silly. I'll put some lipstick on. I must have chewed it all off by now. Hey, hey you, you dropped this piece of paper out of your purse. Hmm? Paper? Let's see. Oh, oh, it's nothing important. Just a notice from the management of the hotel. It was in our box. It only says that the management is taking advantage of the bad weather to repair the swimming pool. 
It drained all the water out this afternoon and closed it until further notice. Suspense. You've been listening to The Big Dive, written for suspense by John West. Heard in tonight's story were Leon Jenny as Danny King, Rosemary Rice as Betty, Sam Gray as Mike Brogan, Mandel Kramer as Charlie, Ralph Bell as the Barker, and Bill Smith as Uncle Horace. Listen again next week when we return with Night Ferry to Paris by William N. Robeson. Another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense.